Thanks, Kurt. Thanks, everybody. I'm Addison Snell with Intersect 360 Research. We are uh, market research analysts who cover high-performance data markets, particularly high-performance computing, but also uh, hyperscale. That's a distinct market now from, uh, from HPC, and I'll talk very briefly about that, as well as topics like AI, cloud, big data, and analytics to the extent that they overlap into these areas. We have a wealth of research from Intersect 360 Research available that I'm not going to be able to present on all of, but on our website, you can find our research calendar for the year. For high-performance computing, we do a market model and forecast. That's the revenue for the industry segmented various ways. Products and services is usually the primary one that people think of. That segments the market into servers, storage, software, networks, cloud computing, etc. But we also look at all of the different segmentations there, vertical markets, regions, etc. We do revenue share for the server vendors and for the storage vendors. Uh, those are the ones where we have enough visibility to break out the, the revenue shares. Those we do last year, this year only. We don't forecast those going forward because as analysts, we don't want to influence them, right? If we start saying, well, this company we think is going to gain share from that company, that becomes influential and we don't want to do that in the market. So we forecast the trends but not the vendor shares. We have anchor surveys in uh, where we talk to the HPC users community both about their spending patterns that includes looking at how machine learning is ha having an effect on HPC budgets we did this report last year and we're about to publish an update on it for, for our, uh, this year from the most recent budget survey and also what we call our site census survey which is installation trends where we're looking at systems installed storage installed processors networks operating systems middleware and end-user applications in 11 different categories what are the most most commonly cited applications that we find in the market. We are doing a, um, a training infrastructure market size that's a little bit difficult in terms of methodology and defining that, and I'll spend a minute on that, um, but we do have that, mar uh, that forthcoming as well. And then new this year, we're doing vendor profiles. I'm going to emphasize these are not sponsored content. I mean, we do sponsored content. People can hire us to write a white paper. We do that like analysts do, but these in particular are not sponsored content. To be on the list, we're looking at people who are at or near the top in terms of being relevant in their respective categories and choosing which companies we want to write up, looking at the relevant data from the surveys and their market shares in this space, and then do a SWOT analysis on, on each company. So those are more things that you'll be able to find from us this year. The big trend, of course, that everyone's talking about this year is AI. And, uh, and as analysts, the big thing people ask us is, well, how big is the AI market, which sounds like a, a really simple straightforward question. Um, unfortunately, it's not. I will answer that question, but um, I'm going to take a short walk as an example through analytics because people might remember that we went through this first. If we rolled back five, six, seven years ago, this conference, instead of being a whole AI conference through the whole thing, was all big data. It was all everyone talked about was big data and analytics. And people would ask, what's the size of the big data market? Now, if you want to come into competition against us and make a fast buck as an analyst, I can give you a simple three-step process for making a fortune as an analyst in the short term. Step one, describe a market that is truly enormous and very fast growing. Put any number on it you like. No one will ask how you came to it. The bigger, the better. Two, tell your client that the only thing they need to do to address the whole market is one simple thing. Three, that one simple thing should be what your client already thought it was. So if in the year 2013, I had put out a market research report that said the big data market is $80 billion and growing at 80% a year for the next 20 years, and all you need to do to address the whole thing is Hadoop, we could have sold that report over and over again for about $80,000 a shot. It was what people wanted to buy, despite the fact that we never had to put out a, a methodology report that said, out of that $80 billion, how many big datas is that, and how much does each one cost, right? <laughs> that's, that's a lot of the, the really profitable short-term market research is like that. We try to avoid that, right, and actually look at spending patterns. If there was an $80 billion bump, where was it? Because enterprise computing as a whole stayed pretty flat 
over that time frame, over those couple of years that big data was really hot. Now, analytics was a, a, an emerging workload, but what we found was that people were mostly using data they already had, storage they already had or planned, servers they already had or planned, people they already had or planned. They might change the configurations. In fact, the one really notable thing we saw was that people bought more flash, right? And so I bought the same number of bytes, but more flash. So it was more more dollars per byte. And storage got a relative bump compared to everything else. It kind of stole money from servers and personnel and other areas for a couple of years. Storage got a bump. There was a lot of new software. Much of that was free or it was add-on analytics modules to other enterprise software that was planned. So we try to look at it that way, right? AI, some of it is like that. The biggest thing that's happening within the HPC market is people are influenced in what their configurations are. They're buying different things because of it, but we're trying to be careful about monitoring what's going on with the budget. We are seeing more of a budget bump with AI than we did with analytics, and I can talk about that. Um, and Moreover, there is a distinct portion of the AI market that's distinct, where we can identify some pockets where people say, that's my AI infrastructure, and that's my HPC infrastructure, and that's my general enterprise infrastructure. Sometimes it's distinct. Usually when it's distinct, it's from a hyperscale company. Google, Facebook, Microsoft have dedicated AI training infrastructure. Within HPC, there's some of it. Finance is the most uh, notable example. There's some in personalized medicine, manufacturing. So there's some of it out there, but we take a very careful approach to those trends and sizing that market. The total worldwide market was up overall 3.2%, reaching $36.1 billion for HPC in 2018. The growth has been driven in recent years by the commercial sector. Just like I was saying with big data and analytics having a bump in storage, last year to this year, what we saw was a big bump in the server segment, which was already the, the, the largest category, but 9.1% of the growth, 9.1% uh, growth in the server category was bigger than all of the other categories except for cloud, which is, of course, still in a, a huge growth rate right now. Storage was relatively flat, up 1% to $5.7 billion. Now, that server configuration, it's mostly that the nodes are getting heavier, primarily as a response to AI. You're seeing people configuring more GPUs into their nodes, but not just GPUs. GPUs. Another thing that's making those nodes uh, heavier again is the incorporation, in this case, of non-volatile memory components. Back in the early cluster days, we saw a lot of uh, system disks that would be in the cluster nodes for scratch. Then over the course of a few years, th that became less and less common, where people would have less storage in their, less spinning disk in their cluster nodes. Now it's coming back in again, but it's coming back in as various types of flash components that are getting configured into the server. So that's bumping up the server node price again and is going to create uh, more tension on tiering in storage in the HPC space. This is the forecast of that. You can look at it and go, mmm, smooth, right? Nice line. I promise you everything in here has an independent growth rate. All the products and services, vertical markets, all the regions are all the uh, individual growth rates. What you're seeing is the aggregate cloud, which is the green band toward the top, has the highest growth rate, although it's coming from a relatively small base. Cloud is not overwhelming the HPC market in this space, and we could do a whole separate presentation on that. Um, the other reason it's smooth is because um, my partner, Chris Willard, our chief research officer, likes to say when you do a forecast, it has to in some sense be bound by what's realistic, whereas reality has no such restrictions. Uh, so we don't forecast things like wars or floods. Like remember the floods in Southeast Asia that wiped out the storage market for a long time several years ago? So that showed up in the actuals, but it wasn't part of our forecast, right? That's hard to forecast that. So forecasts tend to be smoother than actuals for that reason. Um, in uh, recent years, we've uh, or last year to this year, more of the growth was toward the high end. The commercialization of the market, again, I could do a whole presentation on this, but we look at not just the public sector, academic and government, but more than half of the spending is in the different commercial vertical markets in HPC. Finance is either the largest or second largest commercial vertical market, depending on your appetite for putting together automotive and aerospace together with 
with uh, consumer product manufacturing. Um, is that if, if you took Toyota and Procter and Gamble, is that one manufacturing vertical market or are those two different things? Right. Some of our clients like them together. Some of our clients like them apart. Here they're presented separately. If you put them together, manufacturing is the biggest. If you separate them, then finance is the biggest. Clear. That's just a matter of taste. Um, finance. I have an arrow next to to remind me to tell you that that's where we've seen the most on the ground real deployments of AI so far. The biggest area where it's shown up is in pricing. Um, for exciting as, as exciting as uh, self-driving cars and personalized medicine and things like that are, you're going to have personalized interest rates first before you have personalized medicine, I promise you. And the reason is because there's so much money in that, right? Actually, the regulatory environment is the hardest thing for them to solve on top of, on top of that to make sure you're not giving white people a better interest rate than Latinos or men a better interest rate than women on par. You have to resolve that linear algebra problem in addition to doing the individualization. And then chemical up here has an arrow pointing to it. I love that uh, Stefan Shanks coming up right after me. This is chemical engineering, not the biochemistry down here in biosciences. Uh, chemical engineering is companies like BASF or Dow, DuPont, 3M uh, that make their li uh, living in the plastics and polymer space. That's highlighted because it's got the highest growth rate right now in our forecast going forward. We think that a lot of the material science, scientific understanding of the chemical properties is now going to start migrating into that space. Now, not all of that is distinct chemical engineering companies. You can find chemical engineering in other areas, like in biosciences or even among the energy. The oil and gas companies do a lot of petrochemicals. But this is not by workflow. This is by uh, type of customer, really, by vertical market, which is why you see the chemical engineers out there separately. Um, server shares very quickly. HPE is uh, number one ahead of, uh, of uh, Dell EMC, barely. You got an earlier version of my slides here. I thought I'd change these for you, but that's okay. I can go with these. The, uh, the important thing with this is that, um, that the biggest growth rates in storage have been with the dedicated HPC storage companies. The DDNs, the Panassas of the world are showing the big growth rate this year over last year. Um, and, uh, and some of the enterprise storage companies were falling back. DDN is the highest um, uh, cited storage company on our site census survey. Now, the reason it shows up with a higher survey share than a market share is because of that notion that if someone buys DDN, they're pretty confident they're buying HPC storage, as opposed to getting a partition of their NetApp or EMC storage that they might pay for out of their, their HPC budget, but it's not often as flagged as, uh, as an HPC storage share. Um, I definitely wanted to get this uh, slide in, though, because one thing we're looking at is the size of the storage installations. And the majority of sites that we survey will have one primary HPC storage system. Sometimes you get two or three, but it's more and more common that we see one primary storage system. And those have been getting larger, partly because uh, of just data growth and partly because of consolidation. This is the share of uh, of HP of uh, sorry the share of petabyte size storage systems in our surveys by report year to where it's now just about half of all of the storage systems in our survey are showing up as petabyte or larger. That's this big area here that we're going to have to start to subdivide. Um, so the big thing that uh, that comes up as a trend with respect to this, I talked about all of the flash components moving in on the storage, but then we also have these very large and deep storage systems on site. What we're seeing is an increase in the importance of tiering in the HPC market. Now, tiering, you know, that's been around in HPC information lifecycle management or hierarchical storage management or different terms that go back in time. But it used to be that when someone talked about data tiers, you had two tiers. You had disk and you had tape, right? And that was what you meant by tiering was moving something off to the archive. Now, you might have... 
Uh, you might have flash on the server node in one configuration or another. You could have a flash burst buffer in front of your disk or integrated into your disk. You could have different speeds of spinning disk, a nearline archive, a cold archive. A lot of people are using cloud as a storage tier. So tiering, now you see four, five, six, seven different tiers of storage. And a lot of high-performance storage, sure, the, the, high par the parallel file system, high bandwidth to that big petabyte is, also, is important. Important. That's part of it. And then how you manage the migration of data between those tiers is a very important trend. Um, hyperscale market grew 30% year over year to $57 billion. There are 11 tier one companies in that that spent over a billion dollars each. Um, and that's up from nine in uh, 2017, over a billion dollars a year in IT spending among those top hyperscale companies. So if you see companies that start moving more toward uh, uh, focusing on hyperscale than they are on, uh, on, <laughs> on other traditional markets, that's why one customer can really make a market here. We found one company last year that we're confident spent over $10 billion on IT in one year. And we'll write up a report on that separately as part of our hyperscale service. Um, very quick on AI, deep learning, machine learning. There's about $8 billion last year in dedicated spending on AI training. That's, that's a machine that's specifically for AI training or machine learning, deep learning, that's not shared with other HPC. Again, 90% of that, a little more than 90% comes from hyperscale. The rest come from various HPC areas. And what we monitor there are the different spending patterns, looking at what's the influence in the market. About ha more than half of HPC users are doing some sort of machine learning now as part of their overall environments. Most of the rest are planning on it in some way. So we are seeing those influences in terms of it's, you know, overlapping budgets or same budgets. It's overlapping. Uh, it, we're, we are seeing more of an increase in budgets among the people who are doing AI than, than those who aren't. Uh, it's uh, usually the same hardware or shared hardware with specialized nodes. It's usually the same personnel or, or mixed personnel. And the biggest thing that we're seeing is the growth in machine learning types of applications and algorithms inside the HPC space that we're catching as part of our site census. So that's a very quick overview on HPC and AI, in particular with some of the storage trends. Unfortunately, I have to dash out of this to another meeting, but I'm happy to take follow-up questions uh, offline at some other time. Thank you very much for having me.